Hello! At the end of last year, I put up a video explaining that I was no longer going to produce weekly cruising videos on my own boat, but instead do ad hoc maybe one or two videos a month on canal topics of interest. And some of those would be documentary videos, some of those would be cruising on other people's boats, like going across the wash in the last video, and some of them would be profiles of people doing interesting things on the canal that I just fancied making a video about. And that's what this video is all about. It is essentially a long interview, but the couple involved are very, very good speakers, and what they're doing, I think, is very interesting. I do just want to mention that it is a commercial venture for them, but this is not an advert. They haven't commissioned me, paid me, or asked me to come and do this. I asked them if I could come and make the video because I like the look of what they're doing and I found it interesting and I hope you will too. Whatever canal you might choose to visit, there's always a symphony of sound to be heard. Here on the Grand Union Canal near London, over the constant roar of the traffic, are more pleasant notes of nature. And if you're lucky, sounds less typical of the waterways. The name on a bow peeking from between several other boats gives a clue as to the source, for this is the piano boat. And yes, that really is a genuine Steinway Grand in the saloon. Captain of the keyboard and of the vessel is Masayuki Tayama, a renowned concert pianist who's played at major venues around the world. Co-pilot with Massa is his partner Rihanna Henderson, herself a distinguished pianist and music teacher. They told me how the boat came about. Since 2011, I think, um, or 2007, I've been doing an awful lot of hire boat on narrow boats. It was just something that was a passion of mine. And I always found, because performing is quite stressful, and I found that um, once I step onto any of the narrow boats, suddenly all the stress is gone and I just feel calm. So I just really enjoyed quite often. I don't even know if it was allowed. Now I look at the policies, but uh, I, some, of, some of them I even hired myself just to go out and do a high, week of hire holiday on my own. Um, so it was an inevitable thing that when Rihanna appeared in my life, I said, hey, this narrowboat thing, thing is fantastic. So we, with her family, went on a two-week cruise. Was that the one that uh, we realised yeah. that uh, we, in fact, both of us had concerto performances right after we got off the boat and we didn't quite plan that in, uh, in uh, ahead so uh, we brought on a very decent digital piano on board to practice on so whilst cruising there was a bit of practicing going on um, daily and then particularly on locks we're going up and down and then we have the windows open the doors open and people hear the piano sound coming from inside mm. so then they're asking is that a piano sound coming yeah from there and yes we're, we're pianists and all that sort of thing and then I think it was your idea wasn't it you thought yes well I suddenly thought well you know actually it, maybe it's just completely mad but why is actually nobody doing this um to to give concerts on a canal boat it seemed like the next obvious conclusion to come to but then you know we started lining up the chairs it was only a narrow boat yeah. so it was limited in space but we would we were just looking at what the possibilities would be um and then it sort of evolved to become something rather larger than a narrow boat i and... at that point <laughs> thought narrow boat would have been fine it's a nice comfortable casual setting it would have been but uh things grew and grew and now we ended up with a full-size wide beam and uh, piano but, and, a, and a grand acoustic grand piano 67 feet long and 12 feet wide, it's big as canal boats go, but tiny for a concert hall. Gliding through the water, its imposing exterior is matched by a unique interior, set out as a performance venue, where small groups can sit and enjoy classical music. Creating this was not without its challenges. The impracticalities of having a grand piano on a boat are endless um, and there was a lot of considerations that had to be thought through including the humidity and the temperature because of course they fluctuate and we we get a lot of questions about the damp on a boat which 
we find is less of a problem than the dryness of the air. So pianos really don't like fluctuations in humidity even more than temperature. So there's been a lot of things that have had to go into keeping the humidity very stable. Um, not just that, we first of all didn't know how we were going to get the piano into the boat because it's too big to fit through the doors. So that was a sort of aha moment quite early on when we thought, ah, piano boat, but no piano. But their boat builder, who created it from scratch, was able to roll with the changes. When we approached them, they knew what we wanted the boat for. It was a liverboard, but also a, a concert concert hall. And I don't think Michelle was hugely phased by the whole concept. Um, I think they found it quite amusing, mm. but they didn't seem to be too phased. And so they, they've been helpful. Throughout. They even built this mock piano, um, a blue piano yes. to, to, to see if, if everything fits. Um, so they were fully on board with the idea. But originally it was going to be a digital piano, so they, that was the original idea that we went to them with, <laughs> oh, yeah, that it was yeah. going to be a digital yeah. grand piano. Um, and that would have been easier in many ways. The question remains, how do you get one of these, costing tens of thousands of pounds and weighing 230 kilos, that's about nine bags of coal, into the boat? The answer, through the skylight, carefully. It was quite a stressful day watching the piano be craned in. Um, it was like, you know, half, half the life savings up in the air, just floating there quite casually. Um, but the movers were not phased by it at all. For them, the whole craning of a piano, even a Steinway, is not a big deal. It wasn't hugely dramatic for me, but the day after when the boat itself was going to be put on the water, that was more worrying for me mm. because I knew the piano was already there, sitting uh, right practically where it is. And then when the whole crane moves towards the boat, it was not rocking like a toy boat. And that, yeah. that was more yeah. my concern when, when it was literally like a toy and when it was just floating. I think you stuffed duvets around it to try we, and we, yeah, make and sure just, that it didn't knock the wall. Just in case the piano rolled. I mean, it does. It comes with brakes and everything, but just in case it did move, we put things around padding to make sure that it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't you know damage the, the wall or anything or mm. the piano itself or anything like that. But in the end, it didn't move an inch. Even the radiators are grand in here, the woodwork sculpted and crafted throughout the boat. Behind the piano room there's a large master bedroom so guests can stay for private recitals. It's all very luxurious, you even get an ensuite shower room. Down the passageway, lined with pictures of Massa and Rihanna on tour, lies their crew cabin even that is fitted with a piano. There's a decent-sized galley where Rihanna has created a menu for concert-goers to keep their taste buds satisfied as well as their ears. That said, my favourite item was the robot vacuum cleaner. A piano boat is a lovely idea, of course, but can it really be practical? I think, in a way, this um, the trend of smaller, intimate concert stages are becoming more popular. Um, you know, back from the classical period and then the romantic period, Franz Liszt and all these people, the concert halls became bigger and bigger, and in fact, the, the, the instruments became larger as well. And so, you know, it was about, you know, how many thousand, four thousand seaters um, that, um, that I would play in. But then I think there's a trend to really get back to this sort of small salon setting, mm. uh, where you can really get to meet the artist and really talk to them and I think that's where it fitted our vision perfectly. Acoustically it's not too bad we just we obviously spoke to Steinways and they advised and we looked at various sizes and uh, we found the perfect one that goes very well with the space. Um, I would have liked the full concert grand just <laughs> just to fill up the just whole... Just a practice room, just basically. Just a practice room. Um, but then we can't have any guests at all, so uh, and it would be too Sitting loud. So this piano, is the, we, we found just the perfect size of the instrument, and um, the curtains and the furnishings do dampen sufficiently. I think for the actual concerts, cruises probably will have half stick rather than fully open. But I think that would um, probably balance out with people sitting inside as well perfectly. It's really, really exciting to be finally actually looking at the prospect of bringing people on board. I mean, that was, that was always our original plan. So to, to put that off for, for more than a year has been, you know, 
devastating as a business um, and and you know detrimental in in many other ways. But it is really exciting that we're now this summer finally. Yay! <laughs> really looking forward to having people on board and you know hopefully it'll come at a good time with the nice weather coming back and um and people just wanting to go out and do things so we are really looking forward to it